Hey guys, welcome to the second video of this video series in which we discuss the topographical survey of India. Now in this video, we complete the contours part, the direction part and the cardinal points part. I hope you will like this video. So let's start. Contours. Now first of all, let me tell you why do we need contours on a topographical map. Now we need to explain reliefs that we find on the land which is explained in the topographical map. Now these contour lines explain these types of reliefs. Now you can see these brown lines, many brown lines. This is a map of Mount Abu. You can see many brown lines. Now these are the contours. These explain which type of landform or relief is present at that particular place. It is a gentle slope or a steep slope or something like that. Now let me define a contour line for you. A contour line is an imaginary line joining all places which are at the same height. Now this is the bookish definition. What it actually means is these lines, these brown lines are connected. For example, this one. This is connected together which forms a circle. Now this line explains the land which is at a particular similar height all around the map. So this is basically what contour is. Now with the help of contour lines, we can find out what type of landforms or reliefs is present in a particular map. Now you also need to know what contour interval means. Now contour interval is the vertical distance between two contour lines, two successive contour lines. Now the contour interval which we use in our topographical maps is 20 meter. This means that the distance between two brown lines or contour lines is 20 meter. Like this, these are two contour lines. I don't know if you can see or not. So the distance between these two contour lines is 20 meters. The difference in elevation is 20 meters. So this is the basic meaning of contour interval. Now I will explain to you how will you find what type of landform is formed with the contour lines. Now first of all we start with a hill. Now hill is very simple to find. You see each of them is at a particular distance. I mean the distance between each contour interval is same. Each contour line is same. This is a conical hill or a hill, a simple hill. H I L L hill. Okay. Easy to find. Now I will give you an example of a conical hill on a topographical map. Now you can see this landform or structure formed by contour lines with a triangulated height at the top. So this is nothing but a conical hill. A simple mountain. Okay, now I explain to you how you will find the slope of a particular landform. Now in this figure, you can see that these contour lines are situated nearby and these contour lines are placed far away from each other. Now what does this say? This say that on the right hand side of this landform, the slope is steep. So we have a steep slope. The right hand side and on the left hand side where the contour interval is at distances from each other that more distances from each other this is a gentle slope this is pretty simple to understand if the distance between two contour lines is less then we have a steep slope and if the distance between the two contour lines is more then we have a gentle slope now I'll show you a gentle slope on a topographical map. Now you can see the distance between the contour lines is quite high over here. So this is basically a gentle slope. Now I will show you an example of a steep slope. Now this is basically a steep slope this side. Now you can see the contour lines are almost intersecting with each other over here. I don't know if you can see or not. Yes, you can see that. So the contour lines are basically intersecting with each other. Not basically, it's, it seems like they are intersecting. So this shows a steep slope. Now we find how to determine a ridge. Now this is basically a ridge. Now this is easy to determine from the picture. You have contour lines. And then you have two or more hills, steep hills together. And then normal gentle slope. So this is basically a ridge. Now what does a ridge look like in real life? A ridge looks something like this. 
two hills a ridge looks something like this so this is a ridge and this contour explains a ridge so this is a ridge r i d g and e ridge okay now i'll show you a ridge on a topographical map now basically you can see two structures here that fit the characteristics of a ridge two hills with contour lines following them so basically both of them are ridges and this is how you find a ridge on a topographical map now i will show you how will you find an escarpment or a scrapped ridge now you can simply see of what i have explained to you before that in this particular figure we have a gentle slope over this side gentle slope here and a steep slope over here now ridges this is also a ridge now ridges like this which have steep slope on one side and gentle slope on the other side are called escarpment it is as simple as that so this is if you find something like this on the topographical map this is an escarpment okay now i explain to you how you will find a plateau okay so this is the basic contour diagram for a plateau now what you find is a flat top and steep or gentle sides okay so this is basically a plateau finding that is quite easy you have a flat top and anything you can have a steep slope and you can have a gentle slope so easy plateau now i will tell you how to find out a cliff now basically this is the diagram contour diagram of a cliff now sea is this side and land is this side now what a cliff basically means it is a very steep rock or hill overlooking a sea you can also see some contours merging so this is basically representing a very steep peak overlooking the sea so this is basically a cliff now i don't think you can find any cliffs in the topographical maps which you are provided or which is in your syllabus agar kahi mil jaye to please comment down below i'll be happy to find it okay now i will explain to you triangulated heights spot heights and benchmarks first of all triangulated heights now what are triangulated heights uh, the height of a place fixed using trigonometry and which is shown using a triangle on a map with a number beside it is simply called triangulated height there is nothing to understand it i'll show you this on a map afterwards now let's get to spot heights what are spot heights spot heights are simple dots with a number beside them denoting the height of a point above mean sea level in meters so basically you can see dot 300 that is how a spot height is represented i will also show you that on a map now we have benchmarks benchmarks are nothing but they are survey points of the government which indicate the height of a particular point above sea level through accurate survey so that is also simple to understand and i will also show you that on a map now this is a triangulated height 317 and a triangle and this is a spot height 215 and a dot now we have two benchmarks over here bm 225.3 and bm 224.6 so this is benchmarks now directions now direction is a very important component of map study now if you are studying topographical map you need to determine the directions of some components with the other components so basically you have eight cardinal points in directions north east west south northwest northeast southwest and southeast now with the example of something on the topographical map i'll show you how this is important for you now for example if you are asked the direction from panthawada to bhadi panthawada to bhadi what you will do from panthawada to bhadi remember that your reference point will be panthawada and your final point will be bhadi now what you will do you can basically make this also you can use a plus sign on the, both of the sides now basically this is north this is south this is east and this is west so basically this lies towards the southeast of panthawada so your answer will be south east now an another example 
if you are asked the directions from santarwada to panthawada from this to this so basically make a plus here this is north so pathan panthawada is towards the north of santarwada and vice versa if you are asked the direction of santawada from pathanwada panthawada sorry then it will be towards the south this is south so this will be towards south okay now also you can take the example of rampura make a plus over here from santawada to rampura make a plus over here this is west sorry this is east this is north so this is towards the north east of santarwada now you can also be asked the direction of a particular river now with rivers you can basically find arrows like this you can see the arrow head is towards this side okay so with these arrows you can determine the direction of a particular river now make a plus on this arrow this is north south east and west so basically this is towards south west so the river sipu is flowing from northeast take the help of this arrow towards south west so south west will be your answer there is another way to do this with rivers i'll tell you this in the next video now here we come to an end of this video in this video we have completed contours the directions and the cardinal points now stay tuned for the next video because the next video will be much better than this so i hope you like it if you liked it please hit the thumbs up button the subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next video